I have a little bit of breaking news here from the Washington Post that I want to share with you. Um, it just... Ugh. This one doesn't feel good, y'all. This one doesn't feel good. So Washington Post says the following. Senator Bernie Sanders, whose delegates staged a racuous rebellion against Hillary Clinton at the 2016 Democratic Convention, is trying to engineer a different outcome this year by turning down the volume on his social media-driven army of 2020 delegates. The campaign of the senator from Vermont has told some supporters picked to represent him this year to sign agreements barring attacks on other candidates or party leaders, combative confrontations on social media, or talking to reporters without approval. The move, which carried a threat of being removed as a delegate, has the effect of blunting one of the most powerful, uh, if divisive, tools of Sanders' movement. Its unrestrained online presence and tendency to stoke controversy through other media which has at times spiraled into abuse of his opponents, perceived or real. Quote, refrain from making negative statements about other candidates, party leaders, campaigns, campaign staffers, supporters, news organizations, or journalists. This campaign is about the issues and finding solutions to America's problems, said the social media policy sent to some delegates, our job is to differentiate the senator from his opponents on the issues, not through personal attacks. Do your best to avoid online arguments or confrontations, the policy said. If engaging in an adversarial conversation, be respectful when addressing opposing viewpoints or commenting on the opposition. The agreements angered some Sanders delegates, and the campaign is now working with the delegates to adjust its demands. So this is Bernie Sanders saying, I've been convinced, I believe that the media is correct when they talk about the Bernie bro narrative, and so now I'm going to try to discipline the people who are supporters of me. Bernie, your supporters, it's been proven through a data analysis that they actually mentioned in the recent Vice documentary on the Bernie blackout. Your supporters aren't any more or less hostile than the supporters of any other candidate. You have more supporters online, so sometimes it might feel like that, but that's just because you have more supporters. It's the same percentage of Kamala supporters and Warren supporters and Biden supporters who do and say the same things. Dog, it's the internet. It's how it works. It's how it goes. Now, I'm no fan of Twitter beef. I think people are totally wasting their time if they're fighting on Twitter, and they should probably stop and do something more productive. But you're drafting agreements? You're trying to come up with, like, a contract or something, and you're trying to discipline your people? Okay, listen. I got news for Bernie Sanders, and everybody knows I love Bernie with all my heart. I would have given my right leg for him to become president of the United States, okay? I love him. But Bernie, you got to get this through your head, man. We don't agree with you. On this topic, we don't agree with you. A recent poll came out that found 51%, a majority of Bernie supporters are considering a third party option. Voting for the Green Party or an independent who might run or even sitting out the election. 51%. You think... By doing a strongly worded email, that 51% is, Oh, yes, Bernie, I shall fall in line and listen to you. No, Bernie, because a lot of your supporters don't respond to you in the same way that you respond to Joe Biden and respond to Nancy Pelosi and respond to Democratic leadership, where you go, You know, I would really like Medicare for all, and I'd really appreciate Medicare for all, but if you're not going to give me Medicare for all, then maybe I would say, okay, I will support you anyway, and I will do a task force, even though it's going to get us absolutely nothing. I'll pretend like maybe it'll give us something, even though it probably won't and almost certainly won't, but I'll tell myself that maybe it will, and I'll lie to myself before I sleep at night because I don't want to look like Ralph Nader and I don't want to be blamed for if you lose. They're going to blame you either way, Bernie. If Biden wins, you'll get no credit no matter how hard you go in the pain for him. If Biden loses, they're going to blame you. Even with you turning on your own damn supporters. By the way, the most frustrating part of this, the exact thing that Bernie is trying to tamp down here 
is the only thing that might actually get us victories when it comes to policy. You know when politicians buckle? When they feel like they don't have a choice. You know what makes them feel like they don't have a choice? When they get an overwhelming tsunami of criticism that says, how dare you do this? You need to do that. And Bernie's trying to shut that up. Bernie's trying to take that energy and blunt it. Honestly, I, I hate to use this word, but it's pathetic. This is pathetic. Even you're not even they even listed, oh, don't go after Biden, don't go after other Democratic leaders, and don't go after the media. Well, what are we supposed to do when they lie to us? Are we supposed to sit there and take it? What are we supposed to do when they go in a direction that we flat out don't agree with? That we don't agree with. Like Biden with his new thing on BDS where he calls it anti-Semitic. Am I not allowed to say, hey, I totally disagree with that? Am I not allowed to say, hey, Joe, I totally disagree with the fact that you just signed a fundraising agreement to take over $600,000 a pop from big money donors? Am I not allowed to disagree with that? I got to sit there and take it. I'm not allowed to voice disapproval? You're going to send me an email saying, whoa, 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 careful. Don't step on too many toes. This email, this the stuff that Bernie's trying to get his own supporters to do, Bernie himself would never have done this if somebody was trying to get him to do it when he was younger. He'd be like, are you kidding me? I'm an independent thinker. I have my own mind. I'll make my own decisions. I'll say whatever I want, thank you very much. It's that kind of rebellious spirit which led him to lead against the Iraq war, for example. It takes that kind of courage to stand up when... They're wrong. And guess what? The Democratic establishment is wrong all the time. But listen, fact of the matter is, Bernie genuinely likes Joe Biden. He likes him. All policy disagreements aside, he likes him. He likes the guy. When it comes to him supporting the Iraq war, oh, okay, it's a disagreement. When it comes to him supporting NAFTA, oh, okay, it's a disagreement. When it comes to him supporting the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, which repealed Glass-Steagall, which was Wall Street deregulation, which led to the crash in 08, oh, all right, you know, that's a disagreement. When it comes to him pushing TPT, it, TPP, oh, all right, well, that's, a, you know, that's just a disagreement. What am I going to do? But I like him. He's my buddy. I like him. I disagree. I don't like him. He's not my buddy. 51% of your own supporters are considering a third-party option. By the way, it's not ultimately going to be that. I guarantee you it's only going to be like 15% or so that don't vote for Biden. Most of Bernie supporters will vote for Biden. Will vote for Biden. But as of right now, 51% are considering another option. Because we don't agree with you, Bernie. Listen, what he's doing, all of the criticism from 2016, he took to heart. He thought when the media was scolding him and finger-wagging at him and saying... Bernie Sanders, you brought us Donald Trump by criticizing Hillary Clinton accurately, by the way. But you criticize Hillary, then Trump uses those criticisms. It's your fault. You're the reason that Trump won. How about you say, no, Hillary actually did those things she was accused of. It's her fault. Maybe she shouldn't have done those things then. How about that? It's not somebody's fault for pointing out the truth. It's that person's fault for doing the bad thing. But he took all those criticisms to heart. He thought he was responsible. So now what's he doing? He's overcompensating. I will do everything I can in my power to try to get Joe Biden elected, to try to shut up all the opposition from within my own supporters, to try to say all oh, the bros are you know out of control. I agree with you about the Bernie bro narrative, mainstream media, when it was a smear from day one, but you're feeding into the smear. Honestly, Bernie's a cuck. Bernie's weak. I would never in a million years question his sincerity. I think he's doing what he thinks is right. I think he genuinely believes Donald Trump is the most, the worst evil you could ever imagine, and Biden might be a slightly lesser evil, but he's my friend, I disagree with him on some stuff, but broadly speaking, he's okay, so, but he does not want to be viewed like Ralph Nader, he doesn't want to be blamed again, and so he's going hard in the paint, trying to, he's going against his own people, his own people. That's really sad. The person who I feel for the most is the working class person who's got no money in the bank, who put all their hopes in Bernie Sanders, gave him their last $20, and only for him to turn around and now tell people, shh, stop even criticizing Biden. 
How are you going to make them better if you don't criticize them? How are you going to make the media better if you don't criticize them? How are you going to make the Democratic leadership better if you don't criticize them? They just did a bill. They just did a bill. They just did it where they gave $5 trillion to corporations and crumbs to regular people in the middle of a pandemic where we have over 20% actual unemployment and we're not allowed to criticize them. We're not allowed to speak up against that. We just got to fall in line. We just got to be lemmings and shut off our brains. No, Bernie. No, 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 no. I want you to get louder. I want you to speak up more. I want you to have your voice heard. I want you to say certain things are not negotiable. Certainly, you're not going to, I'm not going to hand over the keys to the treasury, to Wall Street, and let them loot the treasury and rob everybody blind and then tell everybody, well, at least we got some unemployment benefits extended in that. What a joke this is. He's, he falls in line. He's, he's a party man. He's a party man. All the criticisms he took to heart. Listen, Bernie, I hate to be so blunt about this, but you messed up real bad, man. When you dropped out of this race and you got no tangible concessions from Biden, the most you got was freaking task forces, bro. Task forces. So that whatever they, whatever conclusions they come to, Biden could just ignore it. He could just ignore it. There's nothing tangible. And deep down, I think you know that, Bernie. You know what you could have done? You could have handed him a list of 10 executive orders, including legalizing marijuana, an executive order against outsourcing jobs and, and buying American. There's a bunch of stuff you, you could have done through executive order. You could have given Biden a list of 10 of them and said, listen, man, if you don't support these, I'm going to sit out the election. You're on your own. If you do support them, I'll campaign for you as hard as I possibly can. Then you would have had something tangible. But you know what, Bernie? You're a cuck. And you bought into the media criticism against you. And you thought you were responsible for Trump the first time around. You don't want to be responsible for him this time around. By the way, you weren't responsible for him last time, and you wouldn't be responsible for him this time either. But this is what happens. So now you think you're responsible for it, so you're falling in line, and you're not demanding anything. Because you were unwilling under any circumstance to walk away and sit this election out. Which means we get no concessions at all. None. 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 And instead of being honest about that and realizing, wow, we got nothing, so if people want to sit out, they should be able to sit out. You scold your reporter, uh, your reporters, supporters, for not falling in line. Hell of a revolution you got going on here. A revolution where you're not allowed to criticize... The status quo in the establishment. Nice revolution you got going on there. Nice revolution. I'll say it one more time in case anybody's triggered. I think Bernie thinks he's doing the right thing. It's not nefarious. He didn't sell out or anything like that. No. He's doing what he thinks is the right thing in a difficult situation. I just totally... Totally, totally disagree with him. And I think this is pathetic, and I think this is weak, and I think if he has a moment of honesty and he really sits down and dwells on it, he'd acknowledge that reality as well. You let us down, Bernie. We don't agree with you. So no, we will not be listening to your commands because your commands are stupid.